and then just. Uh, Mod Stu, senior developer on the Guardians team, Questa. Uh, Mod Kelpy, uh, lead ninja and product manager. So as per usual, we have some info it's down muted. below. What, sorry? We're getting some muted mics, apparently. Are we muted? Are we muted? Is it on the Are they trolling? Who, They're who? trolling, yeah, they love to troll. They're it's not muted. Okay. Whatever, right, we'll, we'll just crack troll. on. <laughs> We've been trolled. We'll crack on. I've been trolled by you. You <laughs> fell for the troll. <laughs> Yeah, Doubt, he well doubted well. production and fell for the drop. Um, as for usual, there's info down below where you can submit questions in the Twitch chat. You can submit to on Twitter through the hashtag RSDevQA as well. And um, as I've already mentioned, the raids teaser will be in about 20 to 25 minutes. So look forward to that as well. Kicking off straight after the question this week. Um, first one, big and more of a recent topic one from Frankie. Will the 0.6 second server cycle, also known as a game tick, ever be removed or will it be removed with things like the NXT client? Uh, so not in the near future. Um, currently all kind of tech focus is on the new client and that won't um, be solved with that. Um, hopefully it will feel a lot less laggy with it. I mean, jump in at any point because yeah. you, you <laughs> I know, know I was, about I this was stuff tonight. I was intentionally yeah. to get off, um, took it on. But, um, yeah, so the 0.6 second tick is a server-side restriction, so a new client isn't going to change that. Um, however, the new client will like, remove a lot of lag from the, the actual client itself, so the, the strain that your computer is on, it will be under less strain, so it will feel less laggy. However, that 0.6 second server tick won't be removed with NXT. It is something that we want to look into, maybe through different directions, not completely getting rid of it, but allowing yeah. like new content to actually be on the faster tick rate. Um, the reason why we're so kind of reluctant to remove it is because we've got 15 years worth of content that's based on that 0.6 second tick rate. So if you think about how much we'd have to rewrite, yeah. then that's pretty crazy. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, just like you guys, it's all something that I think most of us want to <laughs> remove, but it's you. As you say, 15 years of Like legacy. squares on the floor. What are you, like, what yeah. are you laughing at? Oh, the, the usual chat stuff. Okay. Um, okay, from Gaga Lady, uh, which I feel like is the person who, did they win the... They said did the, the Saren Quest. quest. Yeah, yeah, they won the Saren Quest. So from Gaga Lady asks, can we have a high level Addy Dragon shortcut to Prifnid from Prifnidus? So specifically, Gaga Lady seems to want his proposal on Reddit to put into the game. Um, so... Uh, They've got a post up on, on Reddit about the Malia resource dungeon and how there happens to be a uh, collapsed um, doorway there which matches some assets in the Adamant and, uh, Dragon dungeon. Um, I talked to the uh, Elf City curators about it and we don't feel that we want to shoehorn lots of content into the Elf City. It's not meant to be somewhere that's exhaustive. That's the only place you ever go to. You know, the more stuff we put into Elf City, the less incentive there is to explore the rest of the world. Um, also, uh, geographically speaking, that, that um, Malia dungeon is beneath Demonheim. It's kind of like a, a lost Demonheim uh, room, um, which they've um, the elder um, elven lords um, established links to. Um, but they aren't ge geographically; it's nowhere near Brimhaven, so it has to be another teleport in addition to having that doorway. Uh, plus, um, the Adamant Dragon area isn't really the sort of thing that players within the Elf City band are likely to find much interest in. So probably won't do it, but hey, Rune Labs it, who knows what ha might happen. Uh, well, I would say no to that probably <laughs> because uh, <laughs> when, uh, when we did the Elf uh, waterfall fishing, when we accepted that um, and talking to Mod Osborne about it, it was kind of like the last thing we wanted to do with um, Elf City because there was a few other Elf City suggestions at that time. Well, the, so the, other, like the, the other one is the mining. Do you know how like you can see the mining? Yes, that um, was a recent thing. I don't know, the, the kind of thing you'd see, in my eyes, you'd see in like a, a movie with Texas with the whole big <laughs> like giant things going up yeah. there. I don't know what they, they so, are exactly, but the things like pump oil out the ground. Yeah, yeah, so there's that. There was the Underwood, um, those sort of things. It's, it seems to be quite visual based where people see something and they go, I want to go there sort of thing. Um, but for adding new content to the Elf City, for at least the meantime, like, the waterfall stuff is like the last thing we really want to do. There is kind of like a batch of like fixings and stuff that is kind of like the batch three that was always sort of promised to Elf City. Um, that is coming out in the future, but other than that, we don't really want to do anything more with it for the time being. Oh, um, of course, Saren Quest as well is coming out. So. Um, another question that said, what will happen with Tusker if the Godless and Tusker tie? Which I don't know if you guys know exactly, because there's, there's 30 days, but we have... 
we question for the people, yeah. reeds grew. It's like Re- hot cold. Flip a coin. Yeah, flip a coin, hot cold, something like that, yeah. Flip a coin. Okay, fair enough. Uh, quite an interesting one though. And then from Scolia Aras who says, please, 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 please remove the option to pick up pets that are not our own. Mod Days um, yep. champion has already done that and it should be in one of the next few updates. So he mentioned on Twitter today, saw that, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so it's coming along soon. Um, another thing we were looking at recently was with Mod Doctor and removing some of the restrictions to dungeoneering free to play. Yes. Um, so, want an ex- explanation on kind of what's going on there? Yeah. Oh, well, you, I thought you said <laughs> yeah. you will. I'm not going to explain. You're, you're kind of the more than <laughs> You know a bit more about it <laughs> than I do. Um, yeah, he's removed it. Yeah. It's that simple, really. Yeah. He's he, gone in and he's He's a man out. who likes to remove redundant codes. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> does. He's like, I deleted something today. <laughs> today was good. <laughs> So, so yeah, and uh, next update, that should be out on Monday. So that was the restriction for XP past level 80, or is it 90? Past level 90 for free-to-play Dungeoneering, so uh, Well, it's, it's a cult and warps that are blocked, but anything before that was 50% off. Yeah. Okay, so that will be um, updated as well. The next thing I want to bring up was the, oh, just quickly I'll remind everyone if you have joined recently that we will be doing the raids part of this, te- the raids teaser in the second half of this stream. Uh, we have some of the mods behind the camera now cheering. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that'll be coming shortly. But um, another thing I wanted to mention today was seasonal high scores. You made a forum post about it. Yes, I uh, posted earlier today. Um, so uh, I've said in the past, I believe on stream, probably in the forums as well, that seasonal high scores, it would be something that I'd like to look at again, uh, improve it. But at the moment, we've got other projects that take priority. However, enough players have said to us, can we rerun the existing ones? It shouldn't be too much effort. And there's some indeed, unique there's some unique titles from the existing yes. ones that you can only get back again, I guess. Yeah, right? and indeed it isn't too much effort. So I today posted up a schedule. We have, a, we have an image uh, which we'll put on the screen in just a second. Yeah. Um, you don't see it, but yeah, we have They're an image that'll be going up. up and yeah. then you can carry <laughs> on. Sorry, I interrupted you. Sorry. Um, yeah, so it's we're gonna run each one for one week, so make them more competitive. This is your last chance to really get these titles. Uh, we're very unlikely to rerun these again. Uh, so the, so list, the list is there of exactly what the content is and then the titles yes. have all been run before. Yes, this will be a last, chance, ones, so yeah. last chance to get Future them. Future update section of the forms, you can find the thread for this. The schedule is there. So um, yeah, let the competition begin. Okay. Um, on to the next question, Kagan asks, are we going to see tier 5 combat auras anytime soon, or in any expansion to the loyalty store in terms of auras? I don't think there's one planned, is there? No, nothing currently Not planned. Currently. Okay. No. Um, screaming Giant Cupcake, is that? I think that is Screaming, <laughs> screaming Giant is Cupcake. Oh, sorry, Screaming, screaming At Cupcake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how soon after the World of Act 3 will we see the effects of Tusker's victory or defeat? One week, I believe. Okay. So one week after. I'm looking at the raids group, but they're not even paying yeah. attention. They're the ones <laughs> who did Tusker. Tusker questions. Not even they're paying still attention. not even paying attention. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Look at that blank face. <laughs> what are they doing? Yeah. Okay, so Sam uh, with the double N asks, we've heard you talk about uh, like backlogs and a lot of updates, both for Ninja and the entire game. We ever publish the backlog as a priority poll so players can vote on what they'd like to see in it most? Uh, Mod Osborne is working on something like that at this time, it's probably not going to be, we probably won't use the polls for it, um, but we are looking to do something like that. Okay. Uh, I can't give any more information there at this time. That's quite interesting though, because old school do do their priority poll where, mm-hmm. you know, the whole gang gets to decide what is most important to us. You get three votes, to, to, you get to vote three times on the set of stuff, so you're not limited to one thing. Yeah. Um, so I imagine we could look at doing something in a similar format. I'll have to ask Mod Osborne next time he's on. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Ty Merck asks, do you ever plan on adding more brutal dragon variants? Double hides is a great motive to kill them. Only having the greens available is slightly limiting. I wasn't aware that anyone really killed them. No, certainly <laughs> when I go to Water Fiends or Myth Drags, I've never seen anyone killing them. But They've probably killed more players than players have killed them, <laughs> who have gone to Water Fiends, forgotten their Dragonfire shield and died. Yeah, like, pretty niche. They're not even aggressive anymore. Uh, they? Probably not. No. <laughs> I guess any plans to add any new? Well, no plans. Nope. No real plans. Um, <laughs> you're, dra- we, we you're, you're the most recent Dragon Man. Where, where would we put them? <laughs> on, a, like on, on a um, 
through the air in the bottom of Prifnidus, <laughs> <laughs> or flying underneath. <laughs> no, through this like shortcut to some <laughs> they want, I don't know. So I guess no, there's no plans for that. Um, Ki299 asks, can you tell us what changes ha uh, you have planned for the Hydrix items? There are changes coming. I'm not going to tell you what they are. Be it mainly because of the ma like market implications of right, the second I tell people what's happened, so you're not going to drop stuff. It's going to change. So I'm not going to drop it. I'm going to be. I'm going to behave. You're not going to do not, a mod rally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to behave. You'll find out when it gets released. We're going to release it with a dev blog, so you can see why we did the things that we did. But. I kind of feel like you either want to buy them or sell them. So it's a 50 one of the two. It's, it's a 50 one of the two. Well, it's, it's like any other update. <laughs> okay. And Air Alter asks, can we have the Sacred Heart reset weekly on a Wednesday? Sacred Heart, that's the statue, right? Am I going crazy? Is that the statue? That's Shattered Heart. Oh, is that? I don't know what Sacred Heart is. Looking at Simon. Do you reckon they mean Sacred Heart? <laughs> Mod Simon doesn't even know. Now, now I'm worried. <laughs> It's Shattered Heart, yeah. <laughs> I, I Definitely says Sacred Heart. <laughs> it's Shattered Heart, but um, I don't see why not. Someone's asking, someone did ask us to completely remove the weekly restriction from that, but we're like, no. Oh, no, we, I saw, we don't I want saw that. Like, no, think how many people no. have done that every week for <laughs> exactly. how long, and then you remove um, it. And but I don't see why it shouldn't reset weekly. The other question was, can we get a lantern added to the tool belt? I guess... We've added everything else that you could forget to make it simpler. So why not go the whole way, add a lantern? Uh, be a bit of a pain to relight it on the tool belt, wouldn't it? Do you ever need to re relight it? I, I, I think <laughs> th there's somewhere where you fall and it extinguishes the bull lantern. I don't know where though. Like you need a sapphire lantern or some things, but... Well, that's okay. just for the light creatures. Besides, at the risk of, of setting your trousers on fire. <laughs> Do you want to go there? <laughs> uh, right, so wait. I was trying to think of something to come back with. I had, <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing. Wait92 says, can making flat packs be improved? Uh, it used to be the case that you could talk to your butler without getting up from the bench, but now you have to stand up each time. Also, you can no longer make flat packs when your inventory is full of planks. That was hotfix, the full of planks. Because that's yeah, do you know this how this is an inter there's, there's, interesting there's loads case. Of, there's quite a lot of things in RuneScape where the only example comes to mind is, imagine I have a full inventory of fish, raw fish, and one prawn ball. Even if I open it, it's going to replace that inventory slot with whatever's inside. It won't do it. You need an additional slot, even though a slot's going to become available. I think that happened to the planks um, right. for well, flat packs we can, with the we latest update. And I'm pretty sure it was hotfix last week to be changed. To be changed. Oh, I, ha I have this feeling. <laughs> I yeah. it was this one's it. an interesting one because this is like this the first half of that question came from a ninja fix because someone wanted us to so when you make a flat pack and you click the portal to leave yeah you kind of just spun around and went hey ball and <laughs> like yeah exactly so we ninja fixed it to allow you to leave straight away and yeah so now can you no longer talk to a butler while you're there so no we'd stand up wouldn't you so so you'd have to so what's the yeah. plan mod pie well we can we can split it based on portal and butler oh I'll, I'll add it to the pie pad there you go all right cool Alright, SpecMeat4 asks, can anything be done about the barrows mounds that force your camera zoom in and changes the angles? Maybe. I feel like this is yeah. one that we've attempted to fix and it hasn't actually been fixed. No, we can, we can address that. You can? We can, take, yeah. we can definitely, t we'll take a look. Yeah. And the other thing is how violently it shakes after you, they've also mentioned how violently it shakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The rest of I, the question is amazing. I, I actually vomited and it made me feel nauseous. <laughs> Surely that happened? <laughs> Surely you're nauseous before you vomit, <laughs> but okay. I would hope that I've improved. <laughs> that's that's part of the experience. <laughs> Violent nausea is part of the experience. It's part of the difficulty. <laughs> like, do you have a bin nearby? Um, um, I can check it out. See if I, I don't know up. when it was updated. But I I've done it on my Iron Man like fairly recently, and it and it did get a lot more. Violent. Yeah, we can check that. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Outrageous. <laughs> it. Okay. Um, so that's gone pipe pad as well, has it? Yeah, don't worry. Okay, well, I'm just looking. We'll have the raids teaser fairly shortly. Yes. Uh, another quick question coming in, which was from Sakurth. Could tier 90 gloves be changed to operate in line with the way tier 90 boots work? Having the warp grips and gauntlets needing to be added to the automaton gloves. Uh, so I guess they're talking about with the new boots, you've made it so the attachment's obviously consuming the attachment on the, on the old boot. Yeah, I think that no I idea. think the current 
gloves have been in the game for far too long to it's, change it's them a, now. It's an odd change to make this yeah, at this point in it's time. It's very retroactive. It? And there's, there's, there's no reason why you shouldn't have the two on different systems. Okay. Um, oh, we've, got another, we've got another random question here. This was, oh, it was actually an icebreaker one. This one's coming from <laughs> Twitter. And uh, who is it from? From Justin, a.k.a. JTFM, says... Mods, what would you want in game to celebrate the 15 years of RuneScape if you could do anything, realistic or not? Um, I'd make them have to skill and do combat like it was in Classic, just so they realise how well they have it off now. Just like you have to click each individual <laughs> log, you know, you're locked into combat what, for three rounds. There's, there's a thing now, there's a tooltip. If you spam click a fishing spot, it says, you really? don't have to click twice. <laughs> 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 that was added for new players. Like, okay. <laughs> what fishing spot are you using? Like, like fishing shrimp? No, it's <laughs> lobsters in the fishing guild. It says, really? like, don't click twice. Don't I'm like, okay. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's because um, I think when we, when we did some, we basically videoed a bunch of people playing RuneScape, and they kept on double clicking on everything to interact with it, so they added a little message. Do you know when messages. you click, like, do you know when you're running, is it? Like, I, spam click, I, yeah. I click, I, there's a no <laughs> reason to do I do. I'm fishing too slowly. If I click more frequently, <laughs> hopefully I will be faster. I guess but, it was the that's what it used to be. You, yeah. you, la you laugh, but some things in the history of RuneScape have actually worked like that. The, uh, what, anyone else for what you add? I, because I, just because I haven't done it, I triple the length of livid farm because <laughs> i'm not going to do it anyway <laughs> evil just make the be, just being mean the whole world the whole ground just like the clan sit at the old party rooms yeah like the disco the whole of room like the whole of, yeah just like that i would take another leaf out of classics book and make it so that um, only one person gets to speak to each npc at a time you have to queue up <laughs> oh like so many old quests there's some still some doors Jeez. in runescape like that if you enter What's the desert city? So Sophenheim? Is that how you said? Mm -hmm. Sophenheim. Like, if Sofenheim. you enter there, I'm pretty sure that's still one person at I a time. I think the gnome one is like that as well. The, the gnome, the gnome um, area, yeah. Because I remember doing some update there and then getting really frustrated <laughs> on like update day that I couldn't get through because everyone else was trying to at the same time. Uh, anyway, looking at another quick one from the chat, and he says, it's from Herpaderpus. Could we? <laughs> Could we possibly have ability books of con uh, constitution and defense separated? Oh, just essentially yeah. just break it it, it breaking up cool. the two I abilities. Know they're asking for I tell you what, if you're on the legacy interface, though, where it are you going to put really it? It's <laughs> really cramped. Like, the ability book at the moment is really cramped. I suppose in the legacy interface, you notice it more. Um, yeah, we could look into that for a ninja fix. It's yeah. it, I know why they want to do it, and I agree. It's, it would be cool. Anyway, um. We're going to look to jump over to, to the raid stuff? Nah, no one's interested in that. <laughs> all right, carry on then. So, yeah. next Let's chat doesn't look <laughs> interested at all. I, like, I think you guys should leave. <laughs> right. I think we're done. I think uh, we should yeah. swap over now. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the other questions in the chat at the minute are raid specific, the ones we've picked out. So, we'll probably do this, do get going with this switch over. So, what we have is we do have a quick loading screen while we switch over to people on the um, sofa. We're going to be joined by some of the mods from the, um, from the raids team. What we're going to do is we're going to go through some raids questions that you've asked on the forums, Twitter, and Reddit. You can also ask some more in the chat. We're then going to, after that, jump into an actual raids demo and show you some cool stuff in game and then come back for a few more questions. So, we're going to play a uh, switch over. Hey guys, and welcome back to uh, the Raids team. 
Okay, you get, get you go to introduce yourselves. Quickly want to say thank you. Didn't say thank you to Mod Kelpie, Mod Stu, and Mod Pie for the, the first half of the stream. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking at your mic as well, Chris Al. I'm feeling like you haven't done it justice. Can't tell you anyway. <laughs> there yeah, that's, that's, be that's better. That'll be better. All right, anyway. So, first of all, introduce yourselves. Do you want to go around, introduce what you're doing, your job title, I guess, what yeah. you do for the team, and then what you've done on raids, or what you've what in involvement you've had within raids? Uh, so, I'm Mod Avatar. Uh, Woo! Been <laughs> <laughs> Uh, been working on one of the raid bosses, um, along with some of the other bits and pieces in raid. I mean, we've all been doing, we've all had our fingers in most of the bits of raid, so. Cool. Um, I'm Kyle, also known as Mod Ramen, and I'm QAing raids. So hey. hopefully it's not a disaster, but that's me. Is that how <laughs> you do <laughs> it? Hopefully. That's <laughs> it, yeah. Full um, of confidence. <laughs> Go on. Uh, Mod Chriselle, principal content developer for RuneScape working on raids, helping these guys make their bosses, um, and doing a lot of other stuff that we're going to show you in a, in a short while. Uh, I'm Mod Deg. I've been working on the first boss for raids. I'm a content developer, by the way. I forgot to mention that one. Went straight into the things. Uh, and I've also been doing the uh, story of the world that raids is taking part on. All right, so we're going to jump straight into the questions that we have. Feel free to ask more questions. They are being pulled out, and we will ask them as we go along as well. So if you have any further questions that build upon these answers, then feel free to ask them as well. So from Colifin, how would you explain raid to someone who has no knowledge of how they work? How is it different to normal bossing? Uh, good question. Okay, so the raid like concept is essentially like a normal dungeon dungeon experience, like God Wars to a degree. However, what makes it different is you can go like boss to boss, it's more of a linear experience. Rather than God Wars, you sort of go into a dungeon, then you sort of do what you want. And that's generally the case for a lot of the bosses and the encounters we have in RuneScape. So uh, rather than like Virago's on his own, it's sort of like the idea of going in, fighting Virago, carrying on, fighting Arax. So, like, it's, it's more of a structured story piece of content, like uh, a bit of a bit more linearity. And we've got some cool things between the bosses as well, so it's not just boss boss. So with more story and lore elements uh, in there as well? Well, yeah, we'll touch on that in a minute, but um, yeah. there's definitely a lot more lore and story to it, um, and there's progression, obviously. So Bulk Supply asks, will raids offer a, a depth of PVM content that will hold our interests for longer than a normal new boss? Um, so, well, as, as Chris just touched on, yes, we're, there's going to be a lot of extra stuff for other than just killing the bosses. We've got um, you know, a lot of skilling content and stuff. Um, but there's, there's, there is more to the raids update than just the bosses. We have got um, some cool stuff surrounding that that um, I think we'll be showing off a little bit. It's a little bit later, yeah. We've got, got some cool stuff to show. Um, but as, as for like pure bossing content, um, we are expecting really organised groups to be doing this. So it is, it's going to be going to be of a level that, that hasn't been seen before. Um, PVM here asks, will there be any kind of anti-farm mechanics like Araxor had? So Araxor got more enraged as the day went on. Yeah. And you'd have to reset it with a pheromone if you wanted to. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the, sort of the idea for raids is that it's sort of a supplement to your regular bossing. So you'll only actually be able to uh, loot uh, raid bosses once every two days. Uh, and in order to fight boss two, you need to have already fought boss one. Uh, uh, so it doesn't automatically reset every two days. So if you beat boss one and you, uh, you know, your team keeps trying and trying against boss two and can't do it, but you don't want to have to fight boss one again to get another try, it, you can come back in like a week if you haven't got time and it will save your progress unless you tell it actually I want to refight boss one or another chance at those drops. Okay. Um, I am Pariah asks will the raid difficulty be tiered to our levels or is it a fixed complexity or difficulty for everybody in the game? Yeah it is, it is a fixed complexity so there's no sort of you know scaling like it hits you differently to hit, hit how it hits me. Um, obviously a lot of mechanics are you know under the player's control to a degree there's a lot of situational and like environment based stuff you have to be in the right place right time and all that stuff can make a di big difference to the damage you take. Um, but no, it is, it is a fixed level, and they, the first boss in the raid is, is designed to be a, a bit easy. We'll say easy. Uh, no, we won't say easy. We'll say easier. <laughs> easier than hard. Not as difficult. It's difficult, <laughs> all right, but it's, it's, it's going to be an easier experience. We're trying to make it more accessible. So you know, if you've got a, you know, people that are, aren't quite Virago hard mode sort of difficulty level, or even, or even less than that, you can go in with a decent team. Obviously, the elite will probably be able to do it a lot easier than the, and the, than the general public. Um, but the idea is that? everyone can have a, everyone can have a crack at it. If you think you can do P of M, have a crack at it. But if you want to go on to boss two, not as easy. Yeah. 
Okay. There's two bosses, by the way. Spoilers. Yeah. So, Vuchet asks, will there be any restrictions imposed on what I can take into raids? For example, armor, weapons, familiars? So, at launch, with there aren't any restrictions um, in what you can take in, um, other than the cannon. Um, it's pretty standard sort of. Yeah, thing. You can't take cannon into bosses. Um, but you should expect it, the raid bosses to be like any other boss encounter. Um, obviously, if later on we find that there are specific things causing some problems, then we'll address those right. as and when they come up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's really hot. <laughs> it's pretty hot. Don't go any Mod further. Flex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say like John. It's like... Air <laughs> 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 uh, any spoilers on um, what the relics might do when Ooh. Raids is released? So these are the relics that if you're skilling right now and uh, a meteor will land, you inside. can get a little boost of experience and then you get the uh, relic that you consume. I've consumed all of mine. I'm going to find out now whether that was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible idea. Thanks to now when you it, so it's definitely not a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. Now when you go in, when you go into raids, if you have less than ten, you're immediately killed. So that's a terrible <laughs> idea. Uh, no, actually. So they're used. So uh, on the world of mass cab, where raids take place, uh, are the gobies, and you'll have the ability to gain uh, reputation with them. Uh, and having larger amounts of reputation unlocks a number of bonuses. Uh, some of them benefit you inside raiding. Some of them are cosmetic things or sort of convenience things around the world. Uh, and uh, the relics from the promo give you a head start on some of that uh, reputation gain. So I shouldn't have used them. <laughs> I, d I mean, if you want to if you want to die, then sure, use them. <laughs> is basically the shorthand. Um, it's a good mix of like cosmetic and functional stuff. Some stuff inside arrays, some stuff outside arrays. But one of the, he wasn't trying to be horrible to everyone. But one of the earliest things you can unlock is definitely useful in raids. So okay. those people that have been saving them every day are like much closer to that initial like unlock and uh, that little you know perk. Um, you mentioned something called Mascab there. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, Mascab is a new world that we've made a piece of it for you to explore. Um, we're looking to expand it hopefully later in the year with Gobi Quest that I think there's a question about later. Okay. We'll come back we'll um, to that later then. <laughs> just wondering what Mascap, you mentioned Mascap, we haven't heard, uh, heard that word for a, ah, okay. I don't know if anyone's heard that word. Oh, I think we promo, did, yeah, yeah, we slid okay. it into the summer promo World just to exclusive. see if anyone would pick it up. Um, yeah, I think a few people caught it. Um, Urgent Justice asks, will shields play a prominent part within raids? Uh, Yes, for the people using them. Uh, with, like I touched on before, there's uh, significant mechanics that make these raid fights. Like Virago has like base tanking and bomb tanking, those shields are required. Um, these guys, especially the second boss, will require very competent tanks. Um, and the first boss, I'm trying not to name slip him, <laughs> uh, the first boss will also require like decent uh, tanks to make it a, you know, more manageable as a fight. Like If everyone just goes in DPS, you know, YOLO it like this guy. Uh, they can't expect to get far. It's not quite YOLO. Like, I'm, the, I'm the main tank always, so... Sorry, who died earlier? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so tank, tank armor, <laughs> tank armor, life points, shield, defensive abilities, um, they're, all, they're all useful. And the, the more we go into raids, the, the more we sort of try and encourage that use. And there's some other stuff with tank armor we'll touch on in a bit, I'm sure. So we've got an update which involves bosses, so we couldn't leave this question out. Nate asks, Will there be pets related to raids? <laughs> cool. Um, so on release, there will be three pets related to raids. They won't be directly related to the actual bosses themselves, like the insane final boss. But on that note, we will be removing your final boss titles until you get 100 kills of each boss. So enjoy that. <laughs> on, the, on the topic, it's worth, it's worth noting, even though Deg mentioned about a, a raid lock where you can't get loot from it more than once every two days, you can go back in and, and fight it for mechanical so you reasons. You can kill like it as many it. times as you want. Or say like say a group of seven do it on day one and they've got three more friends that want to join on day two and they want to get them their loot. They can still go back in. Those people won't get their loot, but these guys uh, will. So that still counts as a kill count for those purposes. Hamster asks, can we solo raids? No. Just in case Wooks, <laughs> Wooks is watching, be no. careful what he says. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. No, um, we, as we touched on earlier, we are expecting um, raid groups to be of, of 10. Um, is 10 the maximum? We're 10, yes. 10 is the maximum, yeah. Um, and we're, we're designing the bosses to expect a group of 10. 
Um, and because we're expecting groups, there are certain mechanics in the bosses that are all but impossible um, if you're solo. Um, so, yeah, I'll be interested to see how small the groups can get. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it's not a hard requirement of 10, but it's what we're expecting. Okay. Miss XB asks, how important will the upcoming Seren spells be for raids? And will the spells be out before raids? I guess we should look to Mod Kelpie for a... Can we say about that one? I no. <laughs> he wasn't listening. The Seren <laughs> spells are out after raids. Yeah, okay, there you go. But as someone, who sat, in the, <laughs> as someone who sat in the design meeting for the Seren spells, they are going to be useful for the harder raid bosses. And they're going to be useful for the lower ones as well, but they're going to be good. And okay. yeah, as Mod Kelpie and Deg said, they are out after raids. Okay. Jordan Araxi asks, are there any plans to have more benefits for wearing tank armor before releasing tier 90? Currently tank armor is kind of pointless. So... We are expecting um, tanks to be utilising tank gear inside raids. Um, we are trying to enforce the the use of, of tank gear. Um, and the, the tank gear that's going to come as a reward from raids is going to have some really, really cool set effects to, to back that up. All right, cool. Um, Bulk Supply, again, with another question. He was asking, will the difficulty of these raids be such that good armor will be important, um, be more important than it is at current bosses? So, good, what was it? So, <laughs> I, was saying, I think that's yeah. essentially just asking, it in a way. yeah, essentially asking, like, can you, like, you know, can we get away with oh, right, yeah. so Void, for example, or are we going to have to go with that? Void should be an interesting, <laughs> Void should be an interesting one, but, um, that, Every raid boss here, it's not like Virago where, or like other bosses we have in the game where there's there's certain places in the in the fight you can stand to avoid damage, like mid-range, and the, you've got your bomb tanks, base tank, and people in the middle can sort of mitigate it by avoiding it. Uh, the raid bosses do like you know shoot out general raid damage, like Nex does, like the shadow attacks on everyone. It's more like uh, spread across the team, so it's not just a case of one guy can be avoided in the mid-range just doing all that DPS. Um, we we've tried to. We've been requested to sort of make the easy version, or not easy, it should a aim to support people in like Next Gear Plus, but in the second boss, uh, and, and obviously to be more efficient at the, the first one, the best gear is obviously recommended. Um, Trindaquil asks, how many raids are they going to be on release, and can we expect to see more in the future? Cool, so on the, this first release, we've called it the Liberation of Mazgab. This will be the first and only raid we release for now, but Depending on how well players receive it, how well players enjoy it, we will develop on the current storyline. We have got a storyline planned out. And then, based on that, we'll pr hopefully release more raids with other storylines, other planets, maybe. Who knows? There's a lot we can do. I was just thinking, we wanted to do a straw poll, didn't we? And, oh, uh, yeah, we should yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to do a straw poll in the chat. If you have been asking questions in the chat, they have been collated, and we have quite a lot of questions from the chat here. I'm going to finish off quickly the last few here after the straw poll, and then we're going to jump ahead over into the teaser, because I'm conscious that we want to make sure we show the in-game teaser, because um, <laughs> obviously one of the most uh, exciting bits. But the poll is going to go for what armor would you like to see the concept and the in-game model of? And there's two options. It's the tier 90 tank armor for ranged or melee. That's so right. We would have shown the magic, but Fred's, stream is, uh, Fred's server's out of date. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so in the, it's in our test build, but not the one we've got here today. So it's in the chat right now, so feel free to go ahead and vote on that. We're going to answer the question while you vote, but you've got the options of ranged or melee. Maybe we'll just give them the, the magic armor sometime in the future. Yeah, I'm sure anyway. we should before release. And Jaiko asks, around what tier of gear would you expect for an entry level into this raid? Oh, well, like I just touched on, anything <laughs> anything 80 plus is, is good. Okay. I'm sure there'll be competitions and people trying to yeah. avoid it and whatnot, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Oh, wow, look. <laughs> oh, that's oh, 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 split that's down close. the middle. That is 50-50. It is actually 50-50. It's, it's dead What's 50 winning? That's not what range I was expecting. Disappointing. So at the minute, range is winning by a couple of votes. It I is that close, but oh, it's still 50. I totally want to sway the votes by saying I love the melee one. Like round Don't say that. Oh. <laughs> I want to sway the votes by saying I love the ranged one. I think magic's the best. I like mm. both of them equally. I think, <laughs> I think, I think magic's the best. All right, what is it actually come out as? It looks like ranged well, streaming ahead. Should we yeah, continue with yeah, questions? We'll do, we'll do yeah, one, yeah, more yeah. Yeah. We'll do one yeah. more question and see where it goes. Um, so, LG noticed, will there be any distinct roles throughout raids, dedicated tanks, dedicated DPSs? Uh, yes. Um, we are 
well, with mentioning like the, the emphasis on tank gear and stuff, we are definitely expecting there to be dedicated tanks um, as well as dedicated DPS. But there's also going to be um, sort of specific roles around certain mechanics and bosses that we won't necessarily go into. But there are going to be uh, phases of, of the bosses that we've got that are going to require specific roles. Okay. And um, Jezel asks, um, will drops from raids be largely RNG based, or will it be a case of earning them over time, like? For example, player imports just earning mm. it over time. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit of a mix of both. Uh, so most of the rewards uh, are going to be uh, possible to get as drops from bosses on a fairly low chance. Uh, and in a, in a case where you don't get those, you'll get some currency instead, which you can save up and use to get some of the uh, new rewards on a bit of a slower rate. Okay. Cricketer asks, how long is each raid supposed to take to complete from start to killing the final boss? Right, so on our current playthroughs, we've clocked about 10, just over 10 minutes on the first boss, and about, <laughs> my computer ran out of hard drive fraps in the second one. <laughs> so I think it was about 25, maybe 32 minutes. Um, but we did suck and people didn't know what they were doing. It was sort of like the first effort, but it is definitely a tougher fight. Um, I, re I reckon realistically, you're talking around about 10 minutes for each boss, so maybe on the 20 to 30 minute mark. And they, like I said, there is other stuff, not just the, the fight that you have to get through, sort of the, the transition period around the environment's got some cool things in it as well. So that adds a bit of time on, but also uh, you know, a bit of interesting navigation and world exploration. Can you bank between the two bosses? If you've got relics. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't That's why I didn't know that. Yeah. I regret using mine now as well. <laughs> you told me to keep mine, and I didn't. Well, don't listen, listen to him. <laughs> I used mine for XP. I just got bored of trend herbal. So, I'm Rubik again. That's will the Gobi quests come out before or after the raids update? Which I know you're mentioning. Uh, so the Gobi quest is going to be coming out um, later in the year. Uh, we did have it as part of the summer promo coming out right at the end of summer, but we've had to push it back because we're dedicating uh, a lot of time to put a lot of effort into this update. Uh, so the request is going to be quite late on in the year. Okay, well, there's a lot of cool quests to look forward to as well. You've yeah. got Seren, you've got the Gobi one, you've got the Vampire one. And I'm probably missing another one that's out next week. With There's another one. There is. I forgot yeah. the name the of it. The Fremenic one. Yes. Ah, oh, that yeah. was it. Uh, I don't want to say the wrong name because yeah. it's yeah. a different yeah. development. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's also going to be a lot of um, surface content that mm. gives you a bit of story about the world as well, which will hopefully uh, get people excited for later in the year. All right, so back to the straw poll. Oh, I was hoping Melly would win. Yeah, so I like so it. you had an option and yeah. you picked the wrong one. I like the Melly. My favourite. My favourite's the Melly you want, to be honest. So, but range has won. I don't see, is it 50? 53, I think. Close. Yeah, it's 53% yeah, it's it's the range won. So we're going to show you the concept for the range armour. And I believe you're going to show it in game as well. Yep, can yep. do. So mm -hmm. um, first of all, we're going to throw up the concept for the range armor on screen. It's on screen right now, as you can see. So that's the concept for the. The one on the left isn't actually being used. <laughs> so the level ninety tank range armor. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So we'll looks really cool when you stand next to the power yeah, gear yeah, as well, because yeah, Serenix awesome. in a, it's in a different tint of blue, but um, it looks really cool together. So we should be showing that in game as well. I'm going to send you guys off to prep for the All right. for the demo. Well, I have one more question, oh. but uh, it's for it's for Mod Ramen while you prep. Is it okay? Great. Right. Yeah. All right. Are you worried? You not I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna <laughs> mess it up. It's all good. So he's gonna mess it up. <laughs> all right. So the final question was from Pure Fry. We've heard about tier 90 tank armor. Can we expect any additional weapons with the raids release? Cool. So as the raids go on, hopefully we are planning to fill the gaps for, so we haven't got really tier 90 daggers or anything. So as raids go on and release more bosses, hopefully we are going to fill them gaps and maybe even give the weapons new niches or niche uses for things that are out Mazcab or other, other raid environments. Should be good. Yeah, we've cool. we've not just got um, the armor as the rewards from raids either. We've we've got some abilities as well. Oh, I didn't um, know that. So uh, yeah, that'll be quite cool. A um, couple of the abilities we've got um, is uh, mage and a range ability basic, um, just to fill in the gaps that. Uh, There's that quite a lot of melee ones because of the yeah, strength yeah. and attack. Yeah, yeah. We know that um, magic and ranged have got some gaps in their rotations, so that we hopefully it will plug the holes there. Cool. All right, are we, are we ready? Are we looking like we're ready? We've got like two minutes, so we need to fill. So, Mod Ramen. Yes. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Phil. Um. Do I have another question? Uh, are you good now? 
Oh, you yeah. don't need to fill any no more, more filler. No, no more so, filler. So, right, the, probably the bit you've, a lot of you guys have been waiting for. We're going to jump over to Microsoft and Mod Deck. Here, we're going to show you some cool things to do with raids. All right, I think we're good. So, this was the loading screen from raids, but it's also in game to the screen from it. So, we're just going to. Should we start with the range armor or should we end with the range armor? Oh, oh we're, we're, we're starting, starting with the range, range armor. armor. So here's the in-game standstill deck. Oh no, I was trying to face the same way as you. There you go. Kay, so there's the in-game range armor. Tank armor, looking pretty neat. Yeah, this is the top tier version of it, so they're actually... There's uh, two versions, we didn't explain that specifically, but um, we'll cover it, I'm sure, in a later stream probably, about all the mechanics, yeah. don't want to get into too much depth. Cool. Actually, I'll fly a little bit closer. Why not? There we go. Flashy. Oh, all them glows. <laughs> All right, so we're going to try and keep it a little bit spoiler free, even though it's going to be all spoiler going forward. Um, so this is the new planet, and I'll let Deg yeah. drive through this yeah, bit. So this is the, the first area you'll see in Mazcap, uh, and if we want to go straight forward, which we're not going to do quite yet, <laughs> uh, you'll enter into the uh, actual raid area. Uh, but if you uh, take a bit of a wander around, you can also see that there's a lot of other uh, surface content around here. Uh, a lot of really nice paint environments I think we're really, really happy with. Um, although some of it's still a little bit work in progress. So if you see something weird, <laughs> uh, don't worry about that. Um, Do you want to stop here and talk about the world? Yeah, Who's sure. been to this world? Yeah, so uh, a event. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, we've had a lot of feedback from people uh, from the world event who are a little upset that it was a bit uh, story light. Um, but uh, is that it? Yeah. Do you want me to take it? Yeah, it's the end. It's right. the end of that sentence. It's a complete thought. Good one, Doug. So um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the bits of feedback we had from the world event was that it was very lore light for the story players out there, and um, it wasn't unintentional. Uh, it was just mainly because Tusker, as some people have already figured out from some of the little things we've been doing with the world event, is very much tied to raids. Um, this planet, planet Mazcab. Uh, is somewhere Tusker's actually been in the past. So all those people looking for the lore, the story, the, uh, the backstory of Tusker and how she was, where she's been, a lot of that stuff we're focusing on in this update. And uh, raiding is obviously aimed at PVMers and, and more towards the higher level of that skew. Um, so one of the big things we're focusing on is making sure with this update, there's a lot of stuff for other people to do. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to come here if you have the PVM. If you're not interested in PVM, you want some more story stuff, you want other stuff to do. We've got mini quest systems, we've got a cool thing we'll show you in a second. We've got the reputation system that relates to raids and not raids. And uh, there's a lot of backstory on Tusca and this planet, this race, um, that those lore hounds can come and soak up. Is that what you meant to say? That that was that was what uh, was meant to yeah, be. That was a long version of that. Yeah. I mean my one was a more efficient way. So, of so it. some of this stuff looks specifically bare at the moment because a lot of the content is um, dynamically generated, and we've turned it off for the purposes of this stream because we d we want to save a lot of the exploration and the fun stuff for you guys on release rather than showing you a new area and just walking you through it completely. Oh, so this is going to be difficult to explain without spoiling the world map. Yeah, a little bit. Stop there! Stop there! Stop there! Oh, he's got him. Oh, that was close. So uh, this is one of the cool things me and Dave were working on. Um, again, a dynamically generated piece of content. Uh, the idea being on Mazcab, there's this really, really dense forest, and to get around the planet, you have to go through it. There's our, there are some perks that can speed that up, but for the most part, we can show you what it does. Um, the forest is like ever moving, and there's lots of content inside there, combat, non-combat. Um, it's sort of a really foresty twist on dungeoneering in a way, um, but there's, there's hidden things to find in there, like uh, reputation rewards. Deg's made a... Sorry, I don't want to spoil this. Should I say? There's, there's a really, really rare unlockable hidden in there. Probably we'll about as rare that. as, um, what do you call it? A Hex Hunter Burn Dungeoneering on release, I'd say. So like that'll be really super prestigious, and when someone gets a little broadcast about unlocking that, jelly. Yes, and then right. everyone will message them, and they'll have to turn chat off. That'll be great. Yeah, so this is V1 of our, of our forest. Um, but you can see it's, it's uh, dynamically generated, and it sort of trims in. So you always come in from the east, and you always need to go north. But every time you go in, it's a bit different. And this is actually um, a world instance. So rather than like being solitary and a bit, you know, a bit um, claustrophobic, this one is actually a world instance. So everyone on the server will come into the same like maze we call it, but it will actually be um, different every time. So you know the whole server could be in here and exploring it. And if someone's opened the little uh, bits and pieces, which we'll try and show a little bit of, 
um, everyone else can come in and enjoy it too. Uh, even if it's been solved, like there's like think of dungeoneering like keys and doors. Um, but if everyone on the server could go into the same dungeon, some parts of it might be solved, some parts might not be. Um, it's that sort of concept. And inside this dun uh, dungeon, I say, this a forest, there's like hidden little snick pits, bits of lore, um, bits of combat, um, and super rare unlocks as well. I should probably mention that some of the assets that we're oh, seeing yeah. <laughs> here in this version are a placeholder, which yeah. is why you might notice like there's a, a wooden door that's kind of the wrong way on, and there's yeah. you know assets that's, I'm guessing that's Elf City. I don't actually know where yeah, that one is. But this has been updated today. So if you go, like, try and, try and show him the, uh, you got the fire. Yeah, I've got the fire. I can't, oh, wait, I've got, I've got my Gobi friend No, no, friend don't take well. him. Spoilers. There's the web. Oh, this is going to look really placeholder -y. But yeah, so he's got, like, the fire, and he's found this web, so you can burn it down with massive glare effects. That's been fixed today. Right, and that allows right. access further into the forest. And in there, there's, like, hidden things at the end of the road. Um, you haven't done this before, have you? I've never, I haven't seen this bit before. He's going to open it, watch. Get closer. There you go. Oh. Oh. Safe. There you go. And you can progress further in. Or you can just head north. You can see on the mini-map there, that's where he... Um, yeah, so we, we can see this is the, the... Go on, click on there, just let him refine to it. OK. So yeah, you don't have to do any of this content. You can just run straight through it to get north. Um, but the idea is for those people that stay and explore, there's lore, there's content, there's a bit of depth to it as well. Um, don't want to go into too much detail again, because we want to save a lot of this stuff for when you get out there. Um, but yeah, so there's, a, there's also like a little mini quest system that the guys have been working on. And some of that stuff has like um, objectives that are stuck, like lost in this forest and you have to explore into it. All right, stop and going too far. If you go north, okay. there's, uh, okay, there's hidden treasures. No more here. All right, do you want to jump back to the uh, thing? Oh, yeah. So we'll show them a bit of the... Uh, cool. So there's actually a lot of surface content the guys have been working on uh, for the, for the lore hounds and the uh, people looking to gain reputation finding out more about the race and the planet. And then obviously there's the raid boss. So without further ado, we didn't want to go too spoiler heavy. We can keep it short because we've got a lot of questions that come through about uh, raids in general, which we'll answer. But we will show um, like his spawn and uh, him killing us. And I'm sure the screenshots that people can catch from the stream will uh, do some speculation. Do you want to talk a bit more about the character before we show him? Because we obviously tweeted a puzzle out on Friday. Oh yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. So the uh, we're about to see the uh, the oh something's going on. Okay, we're about to see the the boss that we tweeted out about on Friday. Uh, a few people speculated that it was like cut Tusker concept, and we had a oh little, yeah exactly. We had a little chore to ourselves. Um, so um, as we mentioned before, Tusker has been to this world before, but <laughs> obviously it's still intact. Um, but left behind were the air route who have sort of set up shop as it were and have um, started kicking the uh, local population around uh, and have installed themselves as sort of the masters of the planet um, yep there we go there's the concept oh nice one um, so this is yeah. Beastmaster Durzag yes and his two pets uh, Tuz and Kra um, Eru aren't very um, Eru aren't very creative with yeah. their naming. There's sort of there's really one thing that's on their mind. Um. <laughs> so yeah, this guy. Um, we won't. Do, we don't want to spoil too much of the story, obviously, with this now because we want to save a lot of the excitement for when you guys get to play it yourself. Um, so this is the first boss, Beastmaster Durzag. He's loyal to Tusk. He's sort of been one of these people that have survived like the rail. Like he's he's imprisoned, like enslaved, tortured these gobies, and um, this is where you get to take him on. Yeah. Really. So I'm going to drop a, drop a quick debug proc in and we'll jump into the fight. Oh, do you want to put the thing down? Oh, he's on shit hold mode. I don't know, we'll go straight into the fight. We're okay. not going to fight him. We're just going to let him wander around. We'll, we, you can see some cool stuff. And you'll probably see us die very, in a very short amount of time. But you'll get to see how the in-game model looks. A bit of the fight, hopefully. Although, realistically, we're just going to let ourselves die. So you guys get to see the fight when you face off against him for real. Uh, so... Here we go. Look at the top of the screen. My amazing health bar. In he comes, and we jumped into the pit. And here they are. So I'm not going to fight back, because we're just yeah. going to get knocked out. But this is basically a group of 10 will take on this guy. 
Um, there's a lot of mechanics that's going to be going on. You can sort of see around the edge if I spin the camera here. There's some things that are going to be interesting yeah. during the boss fight. He's got a million five hundred thousand, one point five million health. Um, as you can see, he's hitting pretty hard already. There's a lot of mechanics that make this difficult. There's a lot of stuff you can do to control this damage. A decent raid group is going to be um, obviously advised here. It gets harder as it goes on. It has phase mechanics um, and a hell of a lot of other stuff as well. <laughs> um, yeah, you can see he's going to get nastier and nastier to the point where he'll probably just one-shot me at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically you need to keep, you know, one mechanic, for example, which we will say is like keeping the dogs away from the boss. They're his pet. He doesn't like it. He gets like um, buffed up if they're close to him. So again, you need to keep those people away from it, which is why I'm taking so much damage now. You don't need to be afraid. It doesn't look. It's not as hard as it yeah. looks. You're not. You're not going to be tanking 8k hits. Exactly. Yeah. It's, this is because he's on this his is own. Because he doesn't it's have one person to help taking him out. It. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so this is you know a 10 man fight, and there's a lot of stuff that was specifically turned off that you're going to see happen uh, later on, um, as the fight progresses. Basically. Oh. Oh. Does he walk? Oh. No. Nope, not on this wild. Nice grub damage. Um, I sort of want to tease more, but we're gonna, we've got another stream lined up where we're going to actually have a fight um, pre-release, like, probably, um, yeah. and we'll, we'll touch on yeah, some we'll more bits there. We'll leave, we'll leave this here now, and we'll see what questions come up. See All if right. they ask the right questions. Ooh, that would okay with me. Yeah. All right. Are you going to it back over? Like. Have it. It's yours. Ah, there we go. Right, <laughs> that was quite interesting. A lot of like a lot of spoilers there. Marcus Alamodega going to come back over and join us, and we've got lots of questions. So all your questions from the chat and stuff have been collated. Anything you have been asking has been added to a, uh, a document. We're going to go through a lot of those now. Feel free to keep asking though. But we have we don't have too long. We've got we can How blast we through some questions. Five mm -hmm. minutes. Oof. Yeah, to blast through some questions. A lot of people are saying Bando's 2.0, <laughs> and I guess Pog I do. Champ, a, bit a lot of people are saying Pog Champ 8K damage. <laughs> Quite a lot. It used to be 20, gay. Eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, anyway, first one from Fambry asks, will there be any solo raids and mid-high level raids? We've kind of been over that one, haven't we? No. Uh, you mean technically yeah. you could send one guy in? <laughs> yeah. Might not work out well. Um, <laughs> as, as for future stuff, maybe? Yeah, I think there's, there's no on reason reaction. why not. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Definitely depends on reaction. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, like we said, we've designed that Beastmaster guy to be a bit more accessible to the, I won't say mid, but like, like those sort of people. He's the easier one. one. Um, so he's a bit more accessible, so hopefully people can have a shot at him. Um, but if there's a massive cry out for medium raids in the future, that might be the direction that gets taken. Um, next one, will tier 90 armor degrade to dust? Uh, so we've actually got two sets of tier 90 gear. Um, like the ports kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yes. Um, so yeah, we've got, um, we've got the, the kind of lesser version that will degrade to dust um, and the, the beefier version uh, that will be repairable and it'll also come with, uh, with some cool, cool set effect bonuses on that one as well. So if I get my own, um, my own set of armor as a, as a drop through RNG, you know, I, you know, I pick up my armor, I look out first kill, I get it, and then second kill, I get it again. What will happen then? Will I get the tradable version? or? Oh, right, so the, well, it's probably best you take on yeah, the so, rewards Yeah, so um, at, as Deg mentioned earlier, we've got two types of uh, the drops. We've got the RNG ones and the ones you can work towards. Okay. Uh, the gear that you can work towards is the degrade to dust stuff. So, okay. Um, oh, actually, it is worth mentioning it doesn't degrade in raids. So this Ooh. gear is raids, raid gear. It is meant for raids. It won't degrade in raids. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, the, the lower level stuff you can you can guarantee to earn um, over time, and the pristine stuff is going to be that awesome rare drop that you'll get. Um, so, cool. and that has a that has a chunkier set yeah. effect as well. There are differences between it. It's not just visual or degrade mechanics. There are actually uh, uh, mechanical differences yeah. between the two. Neither stuff. of them are tradable either. It's worth noting. Mm. Um, next question said, a raid safe death? Cool, I guess <laughs> I'll take this one. Um, <laughs> no, they're not safe death. Not at all. Th that's it's it's going to work basically <laughs> how most bosses work. So you'll die, you'll get put somewhere, you go get your grave or you reclaim from death. Um, mentioning Iron Man, Iron Man won't be able to go into raids uh, at the start. When we do the group bossing for Iron Man, we'll add them in there. But Iron Man will be able to do everything else on the planet. Will Iron Man? Oh, I was just about to ask. Sorry. Will Iron Man be able to do the other yep. stuff on the planet? Oh yeah, everything else on the planet. That's completely open to everyone. No skill or quest requirements at all. Okay. And the other the other stuff on the planet is pretty much safe. But you're probably oh, yeah. not going to die yeah, doing yeah. anything outside of raids on yeah. the planet. Any well. combat encounters, like in our randomly generated forest we showed you there, 
um, that you attack, it does scale towards you. So if your level three hits, it'll be easy. It'll be on par for them. Cool. Um, Bat asks, will raids require the grouping system for a group, or can I just go in with my friends? Uh, yes. So we are enforcing the grouping system to go into raids. Uh, you can make your own group and invite your friends into it, and then submit it to the matchmaking and get the rest of the, the members in the group if you want. Um, but we are re enforcing the grouping system for this. Uh, we it lets us do um, a lot more stuff uh, as far as kind of the grouping content is concerned. So that's that's why we're enforcing it. Um, but alongside us enforcing the grouping system means that it should be getting some more love um, at some point uh, to cater for that. Yeah, it's just worth echoing that point again. Like we understand that there's not a lot of love specifically for the grouping system. It has had its clunks, and and the user user interface side of it isn't too great at the moment. Um, Mod Kelpie, are we good to say you are doing a spotlight around that area? Well, if we aren't, then we already did. No, no, <laughs> yeah, Mod Kelpie's guys and the Ninja guys are looking at it. There's been some back end stuff that does make it um, a bit more, you know, engine side. It makes it more uh, versatile, and the front end of it's going to be updated a bit to make it more usable, user friendly. Um, but realistically, there is a tech side to this. Making a system that keeps this amount of people in sync reliably is um, it's, it's a massive overhead. And the grouping system, for all of its clunks on the front end, the back end of it is very robust and it is, it is very good for this sort of thing. It means you don't have to develop unique Exactly, things, yeah. It means we can focus yeah. on the content rather than the, you know, the things that drive the systems. Um, and, and for what it's worth, you don't have to use the queuing system if you don't want it. If you have a group of 10 people or whatever, just join a group, go straight in. And next question, will raids be, this is from V Matthew Vaughn, will raids be normal and trim comp requirements? Well. well you already mentioned <laughs> that everyone's going to lose their final boss. As, yeah. yeah. So final, yeah, obviously final boss is separate to comp cape and trim comp cape. So far the only things we have are the usual with bosses, you've got to get to a song. But, you know, to get to the second boss you have to defeat the first boss. So. And there's actually a special song in the second boss that isn't just at the start. Yeah. Ooh. So it's a bit... We'll talk about that yep. yeah. another, <laughs> another time. But yeah, there will, uh, it, on the front facing thing, there will be trim. Comp. Feel free to direct your tweets about that to Mod Rather. No, <laughs> no, no trim stuff, no comp requirements, nothing. Um, another question, we'll go with that on there. So Trim K asks, do you need any quest requirements for the up and coming raids? No, there aren't any requirements going in at all, except membership, I think. Yep, yep. Obviously, it's all members only content. Yeah, obviously. Things like uh, having access to ancient prayers and stuff like that probably, you know, be very helpful. It's but recommended. Yeah, <laughs> you can just go in as a level three if you really want. Yeah, good luck. That should make a good stream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really Bro asks, um, will we have new weapons from raids? You already mentioned yeah, there'll be a potential know. potential future expansion raids. Or oh. the uh, and how will the loot work? Cool. So. The loot's going to work much like Rise of the Six does. Everyone within the team will get their own shot at loot. So, say a lot of us were in a team, everyone would get their own shot at some loot. It's not based on who did the most DPS, who did the most tanking. So if I I can go with a ten man max. If I go in with five people, and we kill it. Is there? Oh, you still three? get five loot. It's so not no loot. personal loot. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, you're not you're not rewarded for for killing a boss with only three people. <laughs> okay, so that's more of like a challenge. Right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we expect, yeah. the, like, the, like we say a, a few times now, the, the Beastmaster should be the easier boss. I, I don't see it's, you know, obviously a, a group of super elite PFMs, they're going to be doing it with less than 10 people, but that's sort of like how those guys operate. They like the challenge, they like the, the YouTube videos with like, you know, three man or whatever it will end up being. We'll see how it goes. Um, Vicentini asks, will the raids be legacy friendly? <laughs> You guys have tested a bit in Legacy, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think um, it's going to be any more or less <laughs> legacy friendly than any yeah, other bosses. Yeah, if you're going to... Yeah, it's like, it's like going to Virago of Legacy. You, you're going to have a tough time. It's probably possible. I'm not going to say it's not, as they always, you know, do it. But you're going to have a you're gonna have a real tough time. No, again, I think, the, I think the Beastmaster will be legacy friendly. Yeah, but... I mean, yeah. It just comes down to how well you can play your character, really, doesn't it? Very and well. That now is kind of, we've gone over time, so I want to say thank oh. you very much for um, showing off some of the cool raids things. And you're going to be back in the future? I think we've got yep. another one. Right. So in a few weeks' time, you'll be back to maybe show essentially what you showed for boss one today, the same for boss two, so you can see it but, and get hit by it. That's, that's boss two's my favourite. 
Yeah, Boss 2 is going to be interesting. Boss 2 is fun. <laughs> and like to, again, we'll, we'll keep the spoilers kind of light. We'll show you a couple of things, but keep it very light. It's one of those things of like bosses. Like I think people like the enjoyment of you know streams first day, learning you know gossip on the forums. Uh, oh, definitely. We don't want to take that away from anyone. So you know we're going light on it so they can get the, the full experience. Um, the other thing I was going to mention then is that we have a community stream later today. It's going to be at 8 p.m. GMT game time. I'm going to be hosting it, and I'm going to be doing 2,000 Barrows chests just to see what we can loot from there. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how the Barrows drop table works, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the answer like, is no one knows. Genuinely, yeah. <laughs> cra genuinely crazy. And um, the other thing is that we do these live streams at... 5, 4 p.m. Uh, 4 p.m. game time. Sorry, I shouldn't say GMT. 4 p.m. game time every week. So feel free to tune in next week as well if you are a new viewer because we have a special next week with Invention. I always accidentally say artisans. So I'll try and really hard. <laughs> like inventions. We have an Invention special next week with the new lead designer, Mod Osborne, who's going to talk us through Invention and elite skills as elite elite skills as well. So again, thank you very much, guys. And um, no as for any raids feedback from what they've seen, if there is time to take any. Um, where would you like to hear it? We've got Twitter, we've got forum yep. threads. Um, we usually have the ears to the ground. Twi so yeah, we can Twitter's usually yeah. the best bet. Yeah, Twitter, Reddit, we, we're keeping an eye out on those things. So, right. it gets raised up, just shoot it in whatever way they know. All right, well, thank you very much, guys, and we will see you next week. Take care. Bye. Have a good one. Take care.